Hey there, I am Tam. And I'm Eternally Mortal. And this is the Hidden Egg Podcast. Welcome, or welcome back, or however it applies to you. So, we have absolutely no idea, really, what we're going to talk about this one, this Scuff, episode. Scuffed podcast is scuffed. Um, <clears throat> but, it was kind of always scuffed to begin with, so, whatever, we'll just, we'll just wing it, like we do. <laughs> but, what we missed last week was the um commenting on the comments was us looking at the comments from the episodes and and you know talking about them and stuff so that's what we're gonna do first yeah we're gonna we're gonna try to do that this time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so uh the first one way way back almost a freaking month ago on um, episode nine <clears throat> on episode nine natalie mentioned that uh that they were she was really interesting interested in I, I guess was that on episode nine yeah yeah there was a nine. comment for episode nine which was <clears throat> um the one about pen pals to pen friends or whatever we called it do you remember uh pen name to pen pal that uh-huh exactly that and so natalie was like uh just said thanks and that we were kind for interacting with comments you're the kind ones that send us the comments that are sweet we like that that's cute and then we had another comment from Sierra, uh, a long-time listener and many-time commenter. Thank you, Sierra. Of course, that was a kind of a, hey, I'll get back to you in a minute. And then Jenny Lane gave us a, hey, I'll get back to you in a minute comment as well. Um, but then <coughs> Sierra uh, gave us one of his patented uh, long-form comments. It's very vulnerable and amazing every time, and I appreciate that. That's awesome. I love how in-depth he gets. Absolutely. <clears throat> and, and I I commented a lot on the uh, the actual comment, but like there was a lot in it that I I don't know where to begin to mm. to respond to some of it. Well, anyone on Medium that listens to our <clears throat> podcast can obviously look at the comment um, and see what's up with it. But I think that the one the the most poignant moment in the comment to me was that Sierran mentioned that you helped inspire him to write erotica. And I think that's awesome. That's pretty amazing. Uh, I personally feel like uh, erotica gets a, a bad rap and doesn't need to be there. I don't really feel like it needs to be as stigmatized as it is. Yeah. But that's just me thinking. I mean, most of the people that read erotica are women. Did you know that? I don't, you know. <clears throat> no, I mean, obviously men read it too. But it's more like a, like a 65% are women and what is that like leave? 35. 35% men. Mm -hmm. Actually, <clears throat> I think it was only like 28% to 30% men. So I guess there's like 5% other that don't I mean, don't respond. identify. Yeah. And I don't know if uh, surveys have gotten around to accepting non-binary as a response, but that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That'd be super cool. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, I love that there was a, char a person in this comment, a character I'm going to call him, even though this was a real person in Sierra's life, named Zephyr. I think that's a, a fantastic fucking name. But, you know, I just like characters. <laughs> a lot. Anyway. I don't know, was... at, the, at the end of the, the day, I just I just want to make sure, uh, Sierra, I hope I didn't offend you by any of the things that I said. It doesn't sound like I did, but just in case. just I, I had meant no offense by anything ever. <laughs> I understand sometimes uh, our brains can tell us things that aren't true. And then you good um apparently turned a comment into an article and tagged us both. And I believe I remember the article, but it's been 20 days, and so I can't remember exactly anymore off the top of my head, but um I think I've gotten back to everyone that's tagged me in the article. I have a hope that I didn't miss it. I'm pretty sure I got to it. I may be a few days behind on that, but yeah, I, I try really hard to, when it, when somebody's mentioned me, I try extra hard to, to make sure that I get to those mentions and comments. Those are the ones I, I focus on. I wish I could like turn off all the other ones. I, I don't, I don't care if you've clapped or not. Like, I, I don't need the notification telling me that. Cause it, there's literally nothing for me to do about it except for just, huh. You know? 
<laughs> yeah, unless you want to get into a, a, the clap number. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I'm not making a spreadsheet of like who clapped what. Like, mm, no, I'm oh, good. I'm. I could make a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> but why? Because I make spreadsheets for fun. I know, but this this sounds this seems like something that's just too easy to like form judgments about the results. Do you mean to do you mean to give you a forty five minute presentation about my Rocket League spreadsheet? Because I could. Anyway. <laughs> um, thank you, you good. We appreciate you uh, interacting with us again uh, in the comments, and I'm so glad that we were able to inspire another article. That's pretty cool. Uh, our silly voices. <laughs> Uh, R.C. Hammond gave us a um, gave us a thanks for keeping in touch and tell us that our voice is appreciated. Thanks very much, R.C. And Miss Peach said some very sweet stuff about us getting better and wanting to take care of us. Oh, that's cute. Thank you. Um, I think we're pretty much recovered at this point. From... Yep. I'm recovered from COVID, like the main part, but I seem to have like this. I, I think I'm having the long COVID symptoms. And currently today, I seem to be bombarded by allergies. <clears throat> Couldn't have been a better time for my throat to decide to lock up like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. What a performance. Joking, by the way. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, I, I think we're both a little kind of like uh, out of our normal headspace still. Possibly because of COVID, possibly because of anything else, because the world is weird. But... Um, yeah, uh, it's going to be probably a little awkward for the coming weeks or months, depending on how things go. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> and then the last one that I that we have is uh, De Dennis Gorbanov. And, yeah, another thing about just, just COVID sucks. <laughs> yeah, fuck COVID. Um, but, yeah, we were recovering nicely. Thank you for the well wishes. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Okay, so we don't really have anything planned, and we haven't even gotten to minute 15, so... Easy peasy, no problem. All we gotta do now is just vamp for the next 40 minutes. <clears throat> um, but, you know, it's just a podcast about vulnerability. Oh, is it just... It's just a podcast. We just gotta talk about some stuff. Well, we had that thing that I, I, I felt a little bit sparked to uh, to talk about before we started recording um, we're like people okay so when people talk right because you were telling me that i should just complain about my oh yeah yeah, yeah. my stuff Let, let's let's do the backstory real quick so yeah, okay i i did um <laughs> i did want to uh just give tam the space to just complain and tam reasonably suggested that maybe people wouldn't enjoy listening to someone just fucking bitch and complain and I was yeah, like, who wants to hear that? Like everybody has some stuff to complain about. And I was, I was just kind of putting forth that, uh, complaining nowadays is kind of like, um, stigmatized to the point where people don't do it very often. And so it's actually like very vulnerable if you're given the space to complain, because then you just riff off of the things that are pissing you off. And it's very, it, it's very personal. It's, it's sharing a very personal part of you. To discuss the things that are just upsetting you, even if it's just like day-to-day -day bullshit. Like, okay, do you want me to do you want me to do my little my little complaining right now? Oh, did I convince you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying like yeah, this is think? the moment if I'm gonna do it. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. head right now. I took a Claritin, an off-brand one, so I don't really know what's a Walletin. Whatever. Whatever. <clears throat> and it's 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 slowly kicking in, um, but like my head feels like there's cotton in it and my eyes hurt a little bit it, it feels like allergies it feels like i'm really allergic to mold so it feels like i've walked into a room where like molds just all over the walls and in the air and you know taking a few breaths of that and then walking out and that's how i feel right now like it just feels like there are little microbes attacking my sinuses and i hate it <laughs> big sad, big sad, <laughs> big sad, and I'm really tired because I didn't get a whole lot of sleep because mm -hmm. I was anxious and didn't get to bed until late. Yeah, I woke up a lot of times last night. Too. <clears throat> yeah, uh -huh. so there's my complaining. Right, which took like a minute, and I'm sure it was not onerous to hear it all. It I don't know. I think it was probably stupid, but it's fine. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <go ahead. laughs> so people talk. 
so people talk about and you were talking about like i should i should tell my complaints and everything and i i was i was like i don't know if i can do that and you you said that i'm the kind of person that when i say the things out loud i will hear myself speaking and then respond to that and that you know that self-awareness makes kind of what I say a little bit more content worthy right and to add a word in there um, in insight like you hear your own words complaining about something and you will hear and you, you will your mind will come up with with insight into those words and ways to help you and, and like I know I'm not the only person who does this so I'm not trying to like toot my own horn here but the topic that we that we started talking about a little bit was the like why is it that some people don't do that because we know people in our current, like, real life, day to day, yeah. that, like, they hear themselves, so, I'm sure that, like, they have to, their ears are working, mm -hmm. and they say things out of their mouth, so, like, the sound waves that come out of their mouth have to be hitting their ears, but for some reason, it doesn't seem like they're hearing themselves speak, and then doing that processing of, of you know, when you hear somebody saying something, processing what like the intention was and like what it sounds like after it's said and like they they're not doing that they just right it ignore like, it it seems like somehow their mind is, is 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 trapped in some other thing probably forming the words and i was thinking about it you know since we talked and i'm like you know we could probably talk about uh ocd or um add or adhd and various other forms of um, mental divergence um, that, you know, it's just more difficult to focus on two things at once and some people are just focused on forming the words and not thinking about what, what the words sound like. Maybe. I was thinking maybe those people, because I have some examples in my mind, mm -hmm. um, they may be too mired in the pain that they're trying to express. Maybe. That's a to possibility hear well. themselves again. Like, it's just too much. Right. Emotionally. But, but we also know people that that's a regular state of being. Like, yeah. as soon as they become comfortable, like, as soon as, like, oh, we're <laughs> hanging out now, like, and the pleasantries of introductions and hello hugs are past, and so now we're all just comfortable, and bam, right into complaining. <laughs> I'm just going to trauma dump everything onto you. Right. And sometimes it's not even trauma. It's just like very minor things. It's like things. the day-to-day -day stuff. But to them, it, it almost sounds like it could be trauma to them. Right. Because the way that they're telling it turns it into this like story about how terrible it was right. to survive through. Right. And, you know, sometimes you have to wonder as the outside party listening to this, like, am I supposed to react like you've been harmed? Like, do you need me to get something for you like you need help bro do, like, what, what's going on what do, what do we need from this moment but like yeah and you tell me to com complain and i'm like wouldn't that just cause the audience to feel sorry for me and to want to help me and like i don't know that the like that just seems like so much i don't want that i don't right. i don't need somebody to come rescue me from my sinuses I mean, it's May. This is just what happens in May. Sometimes sometimes there's days where the mold count is just astronomical. Even not, not even not just outside. Like, sometimes it's just inside of our house. Sure, absolutely. It's an old house. <laughs> it's an old house, yeah. Um, yeah, and in the uh, region that we live in, it's become significantly warmer recently, allowing for that whole mold thing to happen a lot more. Right. Powerfully. So so this isn't like something that I need to somebody to rescue me from, but you know, at the same time it's obviously affecting me. But maybe there's people out there, maybe not listening to our show, but there's maybe there's people out there that also feel like it's fucking terrible to have to deal with allergies and hearing somebody complain about their allergies and what it feels like to them could feel validating. I guess that's true. It could feel real to them. I like guess that's see, true. A lot of people do kind of like think about allergies like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. And it really sucks sometimes. It can really knock you on your ass. If I, mm -hmm. if I smell mold, like if, if things, if there has been like a, a dish that accumulated mold and I haven't taken any sort of like antihistamine for the day and it hits me a couple times, like it just takes like two or three breaths at like two feet away from the source. I am out for the day. Mm -hmm. 
it hits me like a Mack fucking truck. My sinus, like over the course of the, the next hour, my sinuses will like explode in a, in a very calm way. It's not like the COVID way. It's not like, you know, it's not blow like that, but like <clears throat> my sinuses will just slowly ramp up and then my energy ramps down. And before I know it, I'm, I have to take a nap for like two hours yeah. And God forbid I forget to take a Claritin before the nap because then when I wake up from the nap, I will still feel like shit, mm -hmm. just slightly energized. Maybe. <laughs> and and so there's some people who have, have allergies that are, are just like that, that, you know, a lot of other people that have like mild allergies, they're like, oh, what are you complaining about? It's not that big of a deal. Right. And there's people that have like severe allergies to shit that they have to avoid with every ounce of their being right right so like yeah you know, it's a it's a it's a spectrum certainly but i think it's i think it's important to acknowledge the importance of every step along the spectrum and not necessarily like shit on people on any part of the spectrum also but that's just me some people are worth shitting on so this reminds me of a thing, and I don't know if this is going to be a terrible thing to put on a podcast. Ooh, I'm excited. So there was a uh, there was a CSI episode that me and my family we were watching, and um, one of my sisters was watching with me, and my mom was watching with us, and we were like the episode had this this woman that um, there was a blood stain on a bed, and and the you know the next woman that they had to interview it was from her it was her blood mm. and she revealed that like oh i had suddenly started my period and this is like this is not a small blood pile this is a rather sure. large like 12 inch blood spot mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and my sister was like she's lying nobody would nobody ever does that like that's not possible that's not even possible and my mom and I, we look at each other knowing that we have literally done, like, we haven't left a puddle like that. But the kind of menstruation we have sure. could very easily have made that same spot. Absolutely. And it, it became this, like, teachable moment where I realized, and not, not just in teaching my sister, like, that this is actually possible, but it taught me that, like, there's, there's, this, there's this undercurrent in women where there's some a lot of women don't have that kind of experience mm. and so they think much like the allergy thing they're like this is just they're just taking advantage of the situation it's not really that bad but for some women it actually is yeah absolutely there's a lot of people that have a hard time coming <clears throat> inside of their own experience to realize that other experiences exist it's sad when they're in their like 60s yeah that's, that's what like it's like. You've never come across somebody oh. that had that alternate experience that you could actually trust was was telling you the truth. Right, exactly. Or have you been just every time someone tells you something that you don't, you didn't personally experience, you've just been calling them a liar your whole life? Is that what's been going on? Because it's terrible. Oh my god, I remember. Okay, so I've been watching this series called "I Am a Killer." Okay, I haven't heard of it. <laughs> it's it's a it's a Netflix series that interviews people that are on death row or who have been on death row and that got knocked out to life imprisonment mm -hmm. with no parole, um, and they all killed people, mm -hmm. obviously. So one of the people was, and I don't know the truth about any of this, so I'm just gonna be really vague because I don't. It's not about calling anybody out. Um, but one of the people in there was like talking about. Uh, the victim, there was some, like, experience about the victim as being maybe a child molester or a pedophile. Mm. And the the victim's friend basically kept saying, like, well, I didn't have any experience with him doing anything like that. And he's been nothing but kind to me and blah, 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 blah. And I'm, like, thinking, yeah, as a, as a white man, as a grown-ass adult, you wouldn't have that experience. Right. You, you haven't had the experience of being a child in his presence to right. really say that he isn't capable. And it just boggled my mind. It, it wasn't, I don't know anything. I'm not saying that the dude, that the victim was or wasn't 
that's not my point. My point was the the way that this guy was saying this, that it was impossible. That it was impossible. It was it. right. It was based on his direct experiences of this guy, and like that's not that that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but <laughs> that's kind of the world we live in in a certain regard because like okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get political. You okay with me getting political? Eh, you know, it's part of vulnerability to be political. So from my perspective, and I'm starting it with the words from my perspective because I'm not saying anything that's uh, verifiable, I don't think. Um, a lot of people perceived Trump in this way. Mm. A lot of people... Because there was a lot of people on the left and kind of in the center and on the actual left that makes the, the media left look like the center um, that really saw... Trump as um, a, uh, a narcissistic asshole that's trying to use whatever he can to get more power for himself, power and money, and influence and clout, because he really wants people to be impressed by him. He wants people to be afraid and impressed by him. That's kind of his thing, because he's a big baby man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the people that were on the cent a little a little bit in the center and then on the right and everything like that they saw Trump as somebody that was standing up for what he believed himself what he believed was the right and true thing he was standing up for it he didn't give a shit about how what people thought about what he said and people dug that hang on just a second let me get there um <laughs> uh and then because of that initial percep perception of positivity when they heard the negative things that happened that Trump had done and said in other places, they immediately didn't believe it because it didn't align with what they believed before. They had a previous mis uh, conception that they refused to challenge. And that's kind of what these people that refused to look at, from, at, their, at, at, at life from any perspective besides their own do. Yeah, I mean, and you say that, like, that they looked at Trump as being, what was it that you said, that he stood up for what he believed in? Uh-huh. A death row inmate stands up for what he believes in, too. You're going to follow him as president of the United States? Well, it depends. I'm just saying, standing up for what you believe in, it dep it, it matters what that belief is. Yeah. And, and it's like, when I was growing up as a, as a young adult, there were a lot of people that, like, guys that would do bad things to women. Yeah. And then, like, whenever something came out, that like, oh, this person did this, he's a bad person. And then their friends would be like, nah, man, I ain't never seen him do anything like that. But, like, they're all men. Right. Like, you, if you aren't the person that is being... That is potentially being oppressed by that that person. If you're not in that demographic, then how can you say that he wouldn't do it? Because your experiences aren't going to be on that side. Right. Because newsflash, in case n not everyone knows this, almost everybody is different to to different types of people. Yeah. At least different groups. But for a lot of people, that's race also. Like, yeah, some is. people are different around black people than they are around white people than they are around, you know, Hispanic people. Like, it, it, there's people that are like that all over the place. And everyone's like that to an extent. I mean, I can't, I can't say anything. I'm, I'm like that to a ridiculous degree to where, like, I'm a different person around you. And I'm a different person around my kid. I'm a different person around my family. I'm a different person around my lover. I'm a different... I'm a different person around whoever I'm around. And I think that that's actually <laughs> a lot more common than you might think, honestly. Like, you know, <clears throat> we try to... Some of us just try to be ourselves, but some, but a, a lot of times that's narcissists that are really trying to be themselves I mean, purely. I mean, I'm sure that it, it, it is everybody to some degree, but I, I know that from being in therapy, like, mine is kind of... It's, it's a little overkill. Sure. Um, it's from an, it's, it's adaptation to, you know, when I was in childhood, I had like three different houses mm -hmm. and each one was a different environment that had different rules mm -hmm. to follow. And so I, I kind of became, <clears throat> and then, you know, also having school. So I just had, I had different. You had to be a chameleon. Yeah. I had to be a chameleon to have myself fit the place I was at. Mm-hmm. 
And that was just, that was to protect yourself, too. Yeah. You know? From being in trouble. Yeah. Basically. Or from, from you know, uh, like when I was at my step people's house, if, if I made them angry, then I'd be alone. Mm-hmm. You know? So it was protection from being alone, too. Just of my, my stepsisters and stepbrothers and stuff. Like, it wasn't even about me being in trouble. I would... In fact, in that environment, it was better for me to be in trouble by the adults than it was for me to go against the the peers. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you had a strange, rough, weird <laughs> upbringing in that yeah, did. But I don't think it was abnormal. Like, I think there's other people who have had that experience. I think that that time period bred that kind of experience, <clears throat> especially in certain um, portions of this country. Um, but... The 90s and the 80s were a weird time, I think. But maybe all the times were weird. Who knows? I mean, mean, there could be people today being raised almost exactly the same in in similar environments. I don't know. Hey, I'm going to take a quick little interlude to say that, like, dear listener, if you happen to be Republican and are a big fan of Trump, I might still love you. I don't need to hate you just because we believe something different. I just want you to know that, like, our differences don't have to be a massive. Because we're all just people. True, true. Maybe that was pandering. Eh, whatever. I don't like to make people unhappy. Well, you also have this thing about wanting to spread love into the world. Right. Because everybody could use a little bit more love. <clears throat> you've even I think you've even told me in confidence that, like... You wish that you could, like, give some kind of love to Trump. Yeah. In in ways. Like, he's not necessarily our favorite man in any regard, but you still feel... I mean, you're, you're the kind of person that feels like every person deserves compassion and love. I really think that a lot of people that are being ir- irrational <clears throat> and unreasonable and, and doing things that are uh, terrible from certain perspectives, if, if, they, if they just had someone... That understood what they were trying to do, that what they what their intention was, that they wouldn't be so unreasonable. I genuinely think, and maybe I'm a, a naive idiot, but I genuinely think that if someone could have sat down with Hitler and helped him to feel understood, that he wouldn't have decided an entire group of people needed to die. And Hitler's a, a weird one because, like, it's very obvious looking back, you know, from our perspective of knowing all of the things we know about psychology and everything, he was a troubled man. Right, I think, if I remember correctly. And he was like very that. psychologically troubled, emotionally troubled, and he, he ended up taking it out on people mm-hmm. through these these radical beliefs. And, and I think you're right. I think if, if anybody had been able to sit down with him and, and give him whatever it was that he felt he emotionally needed... He may not have had that response, but at the same time, I don't know that we would have stopped the world wars by getting rid of Hitler. Right, because the the times were also kind of set up for that sort of thing. Hitler himself did not cause World War II. He was merely a facet of, and any other... Well, he was a match. Well, any other... On a powder keg. Any other... um, charismatic voice could have easily stepped in the same way and maybe it would have gone slightly differently maybe it would have gone exactly the same but that's history and it's just sad um but you don't have to believe me there are probably assholes out there just like supreme assholes that don't deserve our our uh compassion and stuff i don't believe that i i really don't but well here's how i see I, you it you don't have to <laughs> i don't i don't believe that everybody deserves compassion and love but I do believe that everybody could. So? So, like, there are people that I I believe are sociopathic to the point of they're never going to return. They're just basically our understanding of evil at this point. Mm. And there's nothing to be done for them. But how do you know? How do you know? Because any one of these people who look like they're unsavable 
could be savable right. through love and compassion. And so maybe there are some that are actually unsavable. Maybe there are some people who will never redeem themselves. They will never see that what they are doing is wrong. They'll never change. But you don't know which ones are which. So instead of worrying about me trying to filter out who gets to have my love and, and my compassion, I kind of have to just give it to everybody and wait and see. Right. Trial, you know? trial and error. <clears throat> because I'm, I'm not God. I don't know which ones are going to come through and actually be touched by that, that love and compassion and who don't really give two fucks. Right. <clears throat> So that's the way I look at it. It's kind of the same as you, but not. I mean, externally, I think it effectively ends up being kind of the same. But internally, I'm like, okay, well, I allow for the possibility that there may be a point that it's not worthy anymore. Yeah. And that may not necessarily be objective at all. That may just mean that, like, I've put enough into this and nothing has happened and I can't put any more in. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're beyond redemption or anything. It just means that I'm not right. I'm not the person. Right, because you're just you. Right. You're not all people. Right. <laughs> so you can only go with the, the, the limitations that you have. Exactly. Me, I'm all people. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, the thing is that, like, I, I don't... I, I don't really believe anything super hard. So, like, people that have been decent and rational to me for 30 years in a row, if they're suddenly irrational, I'm not going to judge them for it, probably. I'm not in that moment right now, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to judge them for it. I might try and find out what's going on to help out, because, like, that is definitely a big change. But, like... On the flip side, the people that everyone else gives up on and says, this person has just been shitty from day one and hates everybody that's whatever, and so there's no redeemable qualities within this one person, I'm not going to allow, I'm not going to discount the possibility that that person's going to not find compassion in this moment. I think it sums it up best by saying everyone can change, but not everyone will. Sure. And it's, it's not our job to determine if this is a person who can change or not. That's not, that's not our job to determine. It's each individual's job to determine if they are going to be a person who will. Right. Exactly. Because, <clears throat> well, it certainly doesn't feel like it in a lot of moments. We have a lot of control over who we are. We, we get to choose how we're going to react and act should have said act and react that would make a lot more sense but that's okay whatever <laughs> you didn't you didn't use your choice wisely there <laughs> no i didn't but you know but autonomy sometimes for me autonomy sometimes is choosing something that no one else <clears throat> wants to choose like spending hours making a rocket league spreadsheet <laughs> <clears throat> or, or, or a pokemon spreadsheet or a pokemon spreadsheet or a spreadsheet specifically about my about a single run through of Fire Emblem, like <laughs> cannot be used on any other run of Fire Emblem yeah, you, except possibly as reference. You love wasting your time. Uh huh. <laughs> I kind of do, actually, and I feel bad about it a lot of a lot of the time because I know that there's people out there that are like, "You're so privileged that you get to have time to waste. How dare you just waste this time? I wish, I wish I could have time to waste like you do." And you know what? I'd trade you. I'd let you have it if you, if I could give it to you. But he really I'm, would too. I absolutely would. I. You spent like most of your life trying to trying to do that I, to give everybody your benefits and your privileges. I want the world to be happy, <clears throat> and I would do a lot. I would trade a lot. I would give a lot. I would sacrifice a lot to make that happen. Even just a tiny portion of it for the world. Uh, increasing your happiness there I'm mumbling um, <laughs> but yeah I, I just want to help the world and uh, I, I don't know I, I, I got this life this this life that I was given and I'm trying to do the best I can with it and I'm trying not to take 
um, advantage of it and trying to take it for granted. But at the same time, like, there's so much beauty in the world. And these meaningless things that no one does also have beauty. I'm glad I do it. Anyway, I don't know. The longer this goes on, the more I'm completely embarrassed about, like, everything that I've said so far. And, I love it. Like, we got, you know, a few more minutes to vamp here. <laughs> I love Honestly. it. I I feel like you're 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 opening up your true self. To really? People. You think? Okay. Yeah. This is part of who you are. This is like the quirky parts of of you that people don't tend to see because like I have no reason to show it. To yeah, people. you have no reason to show it to anybody <clears throat> because it's a waste of time. <laughs> Absolutely. It's it's virtually meaningless that you do these things because like especially like the the Pokemon spreadsheets because they exist already. You have no business doing this because there's tons of other information that are, is exactly the same. But you're like, yeah, but I didn't do it. Because yeah. it's not the information that you want. It's the process of, of gathering it into yes. the spreadsheet. And that's not always the case. But for Pokemon, it absolutely was. <clears throat> gathering that information gave me an understanding of the world of Pokemon that I would have needed to play multiple instances of the games to get. And I don't have the time for playing Pokemon, the game. Because I've barely played the game. Right. I played Blue for probably like 25 hours. And I took every Pokemon I could get. I, I caught every Pokemon that was possible up to the point that I got to. And I leveled them all equally. <laughs> I grinded so much in that game. Yeah. Actually, I don't. I think it must have been way more than twenty five. You hours. played black for a bit. I played black for Probably a doing very the same thing. brief amount of time. I also played Soul Silver for a very brief amount of time. And yes, my intention was to do the same thing. And someday, when I'm in an old folks' home, I might decide to start with Pokemon First Edition and do that with all of them because I still have the desire to play the game like that, to actually level all of my Pokemon equally. Because, like, that's <clears throat> that's how I like to play games. There's not even enough spots in the game to have one of all Pokemon. No. And, but, well, you can't catch every, you can't catch every Pokemon in any individual uh, series. Yeah. Anyway. So, like, if I played Red, there's Pokemon I would have to have Blue to catch. I would, so I would have to trade and whatever. And I wasn't planning on doing that. I was just going to catch all the Pokemon that were available within the game itself, within the cartridge itself. That was all I was going to do. I wasn't even going to trade with other people to get, like, the starters or anything like that. But um, I was still going to level every Pokemon I found all the way up to whatever level I wanted to feel good about. I mean, and that's really telling. That That's really telling because that that is, like, the purest essence of you wanting equality and equity across the board right even in pokemon mm -hmm. for all of your your underling pokemon guys yeah from, from, from my perspective <clears throat> if you're gonna go fight the final four which is the final boss of a pokemon game i assume all most of them maybe that's just the first one <laughs> i have no idea i've never gotten very far yeah black has a different I'm sure boss. it does, but like there's an actual boss that's a final boss. I think story. Well, after you fight the final four, you still fight your <clears throat> rival again, I think, and that's the final boss. I think that's kind of yeah. I think that's I think. that's what it is in in black. But sure, like your rivals like trying to take over the world in in black. So, <laughs> but if you're gonna actually be a Pokemon trainer in the <clears throat> world of Pokemon and decide to go and challenge the top Pokemon players in the world, which is ridiculous because you're an 11 year old child. I know. But whatever, <laughs> if you're going to do that, then you can't just, like, grab your six favorite dudes, little guys, and take them and, and go and, and, and win. You can, actually, Aaron Hansen proved this by making Beedrill the best Pokemon of all time, by having it leveled, like, astronomically high. So you could just yeah, level, you could, do it. you could do it with any six Pokemon you wanted to, but if you're going to be a person that's trying to be the best Pokemon trainer... I think that you would have to get all the Pokemon that are available to you to catch, level them equally to see what their stats are and how good they are at fighting and doing the thing, and then pick the six best of what you found out of your data to go and challenge those final four, to go and challenge that end, that end boss. 
that's the effective way of being in the game and being in the world and doing well, it. Do you want to know how I do it? Sure. I pick the six types that I can find of the best of those types as I'm, I'm leveling up. <clears throat> and sometimes that means that like I'll come across like a level 30 when all my people are like level 50 and it's like oh, I have to, to level this one up because like it's way better than the one I have. Uh huh. <clears throat> that's not. That's not how. It's not how. That's how a lot of people think about it, but that's not how it works. I mean, because, it's worked for me. Because what what matters is the types of attacks that you have. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not about. Oh, I I don't. I I I try to match the type that they are with the type of attacks that they have. Yeah. Because but, then it's like super effective. But you're also gonna want those six Pokemon because you only have six in a party. To have the types, the, the 12 different types or more, to be able to take into account all the different Pokemon yes. you might face. Because it's all yes. about being strong against what you face. Yes. So, so, so it's, yeah. not, it's not just the type matching the type of attack. Because, yeah, there's, there's definitely, there's definitely some, some stuff in there. But I, I make sure that I have one of every type of attack. Sure. And then whatever type Pokemon that ends up being... I try to make those different types because then I can keep it from being like a weakness. Right. Yeah. Because you gotta be careful. Yeah. If you got a water type, you gotta be you gotta watch out for them grass Pokemon. And stuff. Or like grass that. attacks, I should say. <clears throat> yeah, because it's not even the grass Pokemon; it's the grass no. attack. Um, there's a there's a there's a Twitch streamer that I really really enjoy, and you know what? I think I'm gonna say the Twitch streamer's name. I might I might actually shout out a specific Twitch streamer, but anyway. We'll see. They've been doing Pokemon Randomizer. Uh, it's actually a thing that you can download for free. I can't remember the name of it, but basically what it does is every Pokemon that comes, that's in the game is a is a cross of two Pokemon. So like, and some of them have custom sprites and some of them don't. It's led to 175,000 different combinations of Pokemon and the game story that you play is basically Fire Red. Um... But yeah, the Twitch streamer that I watch has been playing this game and it is hilarious and fantastic and some of the sprites are adorable and terrifying, but also every item you pick up is something different than what it was in the game. It's just something random. Like, all the items get randomized across the entire game. Well, we really went way off track. Yeah, sorry. It's not really... <laughs> um, and I, I don't know. But it all came back to you you doing some things that are, are pointless and, and time wasters. Sure. And I think most people call that a hobby. Is it? Yeah. Most people, I feel like, produce something with their hobbies. No, you're just, you have a skewed example. Like, because me and, and, and Ghost, we, we don't have hobbies. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Our time wasters are literally just playing the video game. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know if it was the best vulnerability podcast, but we have oh, achieved... Oh, no, we are the best. <laughs> we have achieved <laughs> nearly 45 minutes. Yeah, it's a bit short, but I think I think sometimes that's okay. Well, we're going to do a little bit of a finalizer in, in, anyway, so I think that we're going to get there at the end of the day. Um, I do want to uh, do a couple of real quick things here. First of all, next week we do intend to do the episode on workplace vulnerability um of course uh we also allow for the possibility that we'll say fuck that when thursday rolls around next week and do something completely different but for now we plan on doing the workplace vulnerability podcast and if that's the way it goes let me tell you right now it's not you it's us it's always us don't even worry about it you have no <laughs> responsibility here it's not it's not even the topic it's just it's been rough <laughs> Yeah, actually, COVID really fucked us up. And I still haven't smoked. It's been over two weeks since I smoked a cigarette. Huzzah. So I'm doing good in that regard, and it pisses me off every fucking day. Like, I want a cigarette so goddamn bad. Yeah. But I'm still not smoking, so... It'll take go. months for that anger to wear off. We'll see. Maybe it never wears off. I mean, I'm sure it will, but you won't notice it until it's gone, and then you'll be like, huh, hey, it's not there anymore. Mm. Interesting. Um... Also a reminder, we do have uh, the buy me a coffee thing. 
that's right. going on. And mm-hmm. I do, do we still have merch? Is that still? Yeah, we still have merch. We still have merch. I don't. I'm not really adding any because the buy me a coffee thing is all about the notes. So there's nothing adding to that right now. Right. But, but that's not really the point. The point is that if you'd like to support us in any way, you're more than welcome to do so. Please take care of yourselves first. Absolutely. It's only if you feel like you have something extra that you'd like to give, you're more than welcome to. We would appreciate it. But yeah, never feel cer- obligated. Certainly, necess- certainly not necessary. You don't have to feel obligated. You have no responsibility towards us at all. Even to listen. We're just happy to be here. Um, true, true. I think that that probably does it for anything else that I wanted to announce. Anything you want to announce? I don't know. My brain's not really Yes, brain is working. soup. Absolutely. Brain is soup. Brain is soup. So we'll go ahead and we'll call it there. Thanks for listening. Uh, I'm eternally mortal, and I hope you find smiles this day. And I'm the Accidental Monster. You can find us both on medium.com. And uh, follow each other. Follow the dopamine and follow yourselves always.